Podcast listeners, Joe C here. Are you digging all the music talk and want to see what my band, The Fallen Electric, has in store? Check us out at thefallenelectric.com for all news, show dates, and contact information. Also, be sure to listen to our album, Never Seen the World, available on all digital music stores and streaming apps. It's time to get electrified. Let's just go and waste some time. And we're back. Yeah. Well, Josh, Fu, you ready for some sports? Yes, yeah. Sir. Live from the dumpy little office in West Covina, California, it's the Fu Box Sports with Josh and the Fu. Yeah, man. All right. What's up, everybody? Chilling, so, dog. Chilling. As you guys, as you listeners on here usually know, we usually do sports a little differently. So this is going to be our new segment called FUBAR Sports. Fu, um, you brought up this story last week about Markel Fultz, you know, not wanting to play uh, for the Sixers. Any further developments? Yeah. So actually, uh, this week... Um, this week, they're actually he again. He's saying that he's not going to be playing or practicing with the Sixers until he gets his shoulder or arm checked out, and he's apparently going to be seeing a specialist this uh, past Wednesday. Who the mm-hmm. team employs doctors? Yeah, he doesn't want to go to the team doctors, and a lot of the team doctors are kind of just like, "What? What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. Like it just came out of left field. So. According to uh, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, uh, the wo- who, Woj, we call him Woj, Woj, <laughs> okay. and then when he drops new sports, they call it a Woj bomb, a Woj bomb. All right, so, so he Woj gets on culture, fuck. <laughs> 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 so this past Monday, the the pro, the University of Washington product is meeting with specialists on Monday and again later in the week. Only after he does that will there be a resolution on next steps towards his return or potential move, Wojnarowski added. Fultz, the number one overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft, has lost the ability to carry out and follow through on long jump shots. And there's been internal and external debate on how much of this is this perplexing circumstance is physical versus mental. Mm. So it caught, you know, the new GM, um, Elton Brand off guard, even the, you know, the coach, the head coach, Brett Brown. Um, he said recently to Keith Pompey of the Philly Inquirer that um, this was the first of, first red flag type of news that they've gotten from Fultz. Uh, and so right now there's no... There's no resolution until they get a full diagnosis from the specialist because uh, they the Sixers also had a, another point guard by the name of T.J. McDonald mm-hmm. that they were trying to shop around in trades. And he's like a good backup type of point guard. But now with this whole thing with Fultz, they don't want to trade that guy because they don't know if they're going to need him instead because they're going to trade this young guy Fultz. So the problem with him, again, is that at first, they said that it was a wrist injury, that he couldn't properly shoot because of his wrist. Okay. Then all of a sudden, it turned to a shoulder injury. And there's, you know, how this all started was this guy changed his jump shot last last year, didn't he, um, Fu? Yeah, because he was garbage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in in college, Fu, this he's... guy averaged like 28 points a game. Yeah. He was good, and then when bust, he, dude. yeah, as soon as this he came, as soon as he came in, he just messed, he just messed up his whole shot. It was all mental. He had that sucks. Yeah, he's just one of the many. He sucks, man. Out. He sucks. Okay, okay, <laughs> relax. <laughs> What's up with all these fucking number one picks busting, dude? God damn. It comes, dude. It, it's, well, uh, it, name another one. I'm not familiar with it. Kwame Brown. Okay, what does he do? For the uh, he got drafted straight out of high school with the let's, Wizards. Let's, let's do more recently than Kwame Brown. Damn it! Yeah, we can't do recent because yes, they got can. rid of the rule. We can't. Yes, we can. Anthony Bennett, dude. Anthony Bennett of oh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was the number one. Yeah, boom. 20, 2013 number one overall uh, pick from Canada out yeah. of the NBA. Out of the NBA uh, by 2016, like they <laughs> traded him the following year because 
they knew he was a bust. Jesus. And the guy just sucked. He and the just, team they traded him to were like, we're cutting this piece of garbage. Yeah. They didn't even, he didn't even last the whole season with the team. Like, Yeah. They said it was better to hire someone off the street than this guy. <laughs> so that should tell you, man, how frustrating number one picks can be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything can mm-hmm. happen, especially if you have poor evaluators that, you know, aren't taking in a considerate into consideration the mental toughness of the players yeah and a lot of people don't think that the nba involves mental toughness but it does like if you look at the successful people yeah it, it, it does yeah they have to overcome a lot um i mean not only dealing with their own kind of expectations but dealing with people around them that are not living up to their standards exactly it's kind of like a lebron situation right now that motherfucker is like mentally fit like oh, hell to, yeah. To be a part of a team that's mediocre at best. Oh, no. Actually, we're... Uh, the Lakers are, they are doing trending better. up Yeah, now? they're trending. They're, they're right. trending up. In the last 20 games, um, let me get their... I'll get their standings in a moment. They're 12 and 8. But, yeah, they're 12 and 8 right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they, they've improved. They've improved vastly since how they first started. But they still have holes. There are holes in, you know, in the Lakers mm-hmm. team. Mm-hmm. Like, they, whenever they have to go up against these big centers that can shoot the three yeah. because all of a sudden they're that's like what the perplexed M- yeah they, they, can't stop they can't stop it because they have to switch smaller guys on the big guys mm-hmm. and mismatch th- yeah it's an automatic mismatch like dude the, the big guys have all the room in the world to just shoot you know yeah. throw up a three and especially if they can do it so those are the type of guys that are kind of beating them right now but other than that i mean they they have they could fix it you know by christmas time i think it's going to be all they need to make out. a trade yes Definitely. I think it's time to say goodbye to one of the young children. Yeah, it's it's up to for debate as to who. Um, I wouldn't give up Ingram unless it was for someone like uh, Anthony Davis from the Pelicans, mm-hmm. um, because he's like a LeBron type style player, in my opinion, mm-hmm. one of a kind, one, like one of a kind type of player. So that would be great if we can get someone like that. But I don't see something like that happening until the off season, maybe, maybe. But I don't even that may not even happen because. Anthony Davis loves it in New Orleans. Yeah. So, yeah, Fu, I mean, what do you think? Like, what do you think is going to happen with Fultz then? Like, do you think that they're just going to... I think he's going to flame out, dude. Just going to cut him? Because I don't see any teams wanting to trade No him. one's chomping at the bit for him to be like, fuck yeah, we can steal the number one pick right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's just like, dude, fuck that guy. Yeah, they just, there's no, they just don't see any value in, in him at the moment. And mm-hmm. he's not proven otherwise. So it's garbage. Yeah, he. I think he's just gonna get cut. They should just cut their losses. They still, they're still good without him. Yeah, dude, he's like, like twenty years old and he's seeking an attorney. Like, yeah, yeah, that was. Dude, his agent should have been like, dude, this is gonna look super bad on you. Yeah, so he has a shitty agent too. <laughs> or he's not listening to his representation. The, one of the or two. maybe he is. Yeah, um, maybe he yeah, is. Yeah, maybe he it's is. One of the two. So, so whatever it is. He's getting bad advice. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. Um, definitely. Or, the, or his follow through isn't great. <laughs> <laughs> or that. Or that. They can cure all his problems, Foo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Foo, um, one of the classy things in basketball is to not shoot the ball at the end of the game if you're already winning. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, Who did it now? A couple weeks ago, <laughs> LeBron. Uh, triggered a three when the Lakers were up by like 16. Uh-huh. <laughs> he shot a three at the buzzer of the game oh, shit. and he made it. And then did he act like it was like a game winning motherfucking yeah, situation? Yeah, he was like, like pointing at yeah! he was pointing at Lance Stevenson like the whole way and they celebrated. I wish I had that Rocky oh, music. yeah, but do you know what what happened before then? I guess Lance Stevenson yeah. called him out and said he can't, he won't shoot the three. Yeah. That's just how they are as the team. That's all it is. They're just betting you like what do you one think, man? One-upping each other. What do you think, man? It's 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 not classy to do it, but LeBron did it. Our king did it, foo. So what should Our we do? King did it, foo. Um, it's been happening for like the last year, like Jamal Murray last year and this year. Yeah, He's but been yeah, but the shit. team he did that on, they're like, dude, next time he comes into town, we're gonna fuck him up. Yeah, but it's LeBron James. Okay, that's why yeah. it's like look with that. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? Go Look, try listen, and stop him. <laughs> I, I, um, it's not classy, but if he makes it, it it's worth celebrating, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it's it's a shot. It's a legal shot. I don't. Th- I don't but think, I get it. I, get I don't think it's unclassy. Uh, but yeah, people still have, same thing with baseball. Fucking guys get upset when they get a home run and flip the bat. Same thing just like let that. Play. Just, just yeah, let they're play. they're in the they're in the moment. There's still people who like. 
take offense to that when they shouldn't. Yeah, it's a game until the buzzer. Yeah, ends, yeah. dude. But you know, speaking Clutch of your pearls elsewhere. Yeah, speaking of baseball. Um, you know, we all watched the last World Series of the Red Sox and Dodgers. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, for you guys, was it? I mean, obviously it wasn't that exciting because we weren't winning. Right. But was it exciting baseball to you guys? Or did it seem kind of boring? It was a little one-sided, I got to say. Um, the, the only thing, it wasn't exciting. It was really notable. Like like that long ass motherfucking eighteen inning game. Yeah, like it was it was just a long fucking game that just wouldn't end. Yeah, me and the foo were at a bar watching it, and and we ended up watching 10, 11 innings of it. We watched twelve innings before twelve we innings yeah, before, before we came bounced. home. Yeah, and then we watched another game go down. Pretty much <laughs> when we came home. So um, there was that. Um, I, I I can't say it's exciting, at least on our side mm-hmm. of the of, of the spectrum. You know, as a Dodger fan, I can't say it was exciting. If I was a Red Sox fan, I might I would change my tune. It was exciting for me when that happened because I knew like, do we're gassing them? We have a chance. Yeah, I I mean, didn't go down that way though. Yeah, let me rephrase this. As far as the play on the field is concerned, mm-hmm. like I understand the outcomes and you know everything else, but you know, like in regards to like the shifting, like the constant shifting, not really many big things happening. Right. You know, you had a lot of strikeouts, you know, a lot of fly balls hit out. Like, you know, recently Joe Buck came out and discussed that he doesn't think he didn't think the 2018 World Series was very compelling. Well, Joe Buck's a dick. He is a dick. First off, he is a dick. <laughs> he sure is. And in an interview with WEEI.com, um, the fourth spot, the sp- Fox broadcaster Joe Buck went into detail about why he thinks the ratings of the 2018 World Series were down. Mm -hmm. The ratings were down fourth lowest ever and were down by 25% from the 2017 World Series between the Dodgers and Astros. So Buck said, the games were really not that compelling. Smoltz has gone through the Darling three years ago, uh, or gone from the Darling three years ago to he hates baseball. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's that he it's that he loves the game and he's not that removed from the game. And he wants to see a certain approach that's starting to disappear in the game. So he's pretty much alert. He's apologizing for Joe Buck and I won't stand for it. This and is- I got a message for you, Mr. Buck. Don't be a dick. Not about it. Let me finish. <laughs> Z-Z, jumping to conclusions like a goddamn bastard. Anyways. Play this again? Yeah. Yeah, do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Call my bluff. All right. <laughs> no, he's talking pretty much. He's alluding to everyone complaining about John Smoltz throughout the entire goddamn World Series, criticizing all oh, this analytics. I don't know if you guys actually paid attention to what he was saying, but the entire World Series, all seven games, he was just or how many games did it go to? Six, five, five. Yeah, yeah I didn't yeah, get that far. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I try not um, to think about it. Yeah, I know. Um, but through all of those games, all he was doing throughout the entire time was trashing analytics, saying it was making the game boring. Um, he was even doing it during the NLCS. Mm-hmm. Remember? Like, it just got to the point where it's like, okay, enough's enough. We get it. You mm-hmm. don't like analytics. So that's what, that's what um, you know, Joe Buck's alluding to. He's saying, I'm not sure analytics launch angle and all that's producing better baseball. But but to 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 add to that, um, I don't like them either. I don't like analytics either. And, and and the fact that it was so obvious that they were making these moves because of the analytics and they didn't work yes. was just like, all right, yeah. Like, Dude, I, they didn't start Muncie and, and Ballinger, Ballinger in Boston. I, I know. What the fuck? I know. Yeah. I mean, it. Don't be a dick. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't no, for you. No, no, no. <laughs> that was for you. <laughs> for the Dodgers. For the Dodgers. <laughs> I mean, they're, again, they're alluding to the whole, okay, if we're not, you know, we obviously can't ground it or field the ball because of the shift. It's going to be an automatic out, so let's just swing for the fences. And if it's a strikeout, oh, well, we could still swing for the fences as possibly hit a home run. That's essentially what analytics is doing to the game. Yep. So you don't see, like, those small ball plays, pickles, and all that stuff happening anymore. Mm-hmm. So... That's pretty much what he's alluding to, is that it's making it a little bit more boring. All we're doing is watching these balls go up in the air, get caught out, or possibly a home run. When they're home runs, great. Yeah, that, they're dingers they're, or they're not. They're dingers or they're not, but more than often, it's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's just the law of averages. That's just how this game is played. I mean, if when a person's only averaging, you know, a 
three hundred, you know, point or thirty percent uh, hitting rate, like three hits every ten hits. It's you know, it's not yeah. going to be the most exciting goddamn thing in the world. Yeah. You know, so I think it, what the teams need to do is they just need to find that balance. You know, like the Red Sox did. Yeah, because they have great pitching and they had a bunch of sticks. Yeah, and they, I mean, yeah, they stuck to a game plan, but I mean, when they needed to veer from the game plan, they weren't afraid to. Yeah, and they, then they were really good at it. They were really good at it. I mean, yeah, they won the World Series. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yeah, so fuck. I mean, analytics are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. And that's fine, but at least make them work. Yes, do something about it. I understand the shifts are great strategy. I was actually listening to ESPN Radio, Uh uh, you know, the weeks following the World Series, and some guy came on, and he was saying analytics do not work in playoffs. No. They work in regular season, but not in playoffs. So you got to you got to ditch that policy and you got to be a good enough team to realize we got here, now it's time to just see who can put us over the the hump. Yeah. yeah. And there he was saying that's not what the Dodgers did. The Dodgers were like, "We have a system." Stay the course. Bu-. Yeah. No, it should have been more like, "Okay, dude, they're catching fire. We need to throw someone else in there, shake it up." Or like, "Dude, let's let our guy go." Especially when you had a that fucking four game lead, yeah. four run lead, they should have been mm-hmm. like, "Dude, let Hill just pitch to one more just guy. It might make the difference for our relief pitchers." Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just gotta have that trust. Same thing when like he took the relievers out. How can you keep taking them out when they fuck up and expect to put them back in and get you solid pitching? Yeah, you have these guys that their psyche is pretty much fucked up because every time they come in, they it's like, dude, you, you walk someone, you're taking a seat. And when you take a seat yeah. for pitching the game, you're done for the game. Yeah, so that's it. You just wasted how a pitcher. How fucking demoralizing much, yeah. is that for you if you're trying to be a competitive pitcher? Well, yeah. not only that, you yeah, again, you go uh, alluding to uh, Joe C's point, you're wasting a pitcher. You're wasting an arm. So then by that essence, you got to waste another arm and then another one. And that's a, that's exactly what happened to us. We just lost pitchers because they are fucking using them like bubble gum. Mm-hmm. You know, just pop in the next one. Move on. Yep. Uh, yeah. So... Thanks for bringing up the Dodgers, man. I'm just bringing up Dickhead. some news. Yeah, man. We're all pissed now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of oh, here. Oh, 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 come back. <laughs> poor come Plutes. back to poor all right. dog. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another news. Foo, guess who's number one in the fantasy football no league? No one cares oh, about that. Anyways, so we're going gonna... <laughs> to... Is it, is it Josh? Sure isn't. No. Is, it, is it me? It's not Sal. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> It's, it's not Uncle Sal. No. Nope. No. Oh, good old I Uncle Sal. I took the reins, Foo. The foo it's not, dethroned the king. You mean to tell me it's not DJ No Chill? It's not, not DJ, DJ No Chill. DJ No Chill. DJ No Chill. Okay, who is it? Me. Oh. Okay. Guns and Rosen. <laughs> Guns and Rosen, yeah, I can't believe you kept that game, uh, that, that name, after you pretty much let everybody on your team go. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so what, man? All right. He's got to, they, got, they got to buy into the culture, man. <laughs> yeah. He had a liquidation Every sale on his team. Coming up, Millhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Who I did outscore everyone except one person in the league last week. So all right, all right, whatever. <laughs> Josh wants nothing to do with this. Moving on. Moving on. I, whatever. I had. A, I just had a six-game winning streak. I'm cool. I'm cool. Mm. Six weeks in. A row. I had one of those earlier in the season. <laughs> it's all about the end of the season food. Well, hey, just because I don't care doesn't mean I don't understand. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Well, that's nice Dang, to know. Thanks, good for job, food. Anytime, Thanks. Thanks. anytime. Thanks. Thanks. Continuing on to sports. Football. Football sports. The Browns. The Browns. The Browns. The Browns. That's the color of my poo. Yeah, sure. sure it's is. also the color of those helmets on that TV. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But mm-hmm. like. Yeah, actually, it's orange. But it's like orange poo color. What? What do you? It's mean? a joke. When you give me that look, it's a joke. <laughs> <Get Josh. laughs> uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. All thank right. you. Thank you. I, I, for, I, I needed that explanation. I, I forget these points. <laughs> <laughs> but the Browns have been surprisingly decent. This they year. have four wins, Foo. Yeah, they have. four wins. It took wins. them two years to get three. <laughs> it sure did. Jeez. It sure did. And I know I had discussed this a couple of weeks ago um, when the Browns fired their offensive coordinator and their head coach in the same day because they could not get along. And the That's team right. They just, went to blows, right? 
not to blows, but to no, arguments. They, they, oh, went to, okay. they went to petty fights. Petty. It was like petty shit, like high mm. school shit. Like again, if you guys can go, if you guys go to, I think it's like the second episode in Hard Knocks on HBO with the Browns. You could see that like the offense coordinator Todd Haley is trying to tell Hugh Jackman or Hugh Jackson how to run the team and say you guys, you got to discipline these guys. You're giving these guys too much leverage, you know, too much leniency. You're not hard on them enough. And then Hugh Jackson was like, "I'm in this seat." One day when you guys are in this seat, you'll understand where I'm coming from when I'm giving this leniency. seat. But know until your then, role, bitch. yeah, pretty much know your role. God and so then it. you just see Todd Haley put his hands on his head like, mother. Like, what like, the fuck? Like, shaking his head like, God damn it. And, yeah, that just showed, like, their dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Hugh Jackson, Hugh Jackson was not... Well, I don't know why I want to say Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackson and the was... Wolf, and the X-Men? And the X-Men, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was not unemployed for long. He uh, actually uh, was hired by the Cincinnati Bengals as their offensive coordinator. Uh-oh. And the, for those of you who do not know, the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals are diehard rivals. Mm-hmm. Um, very bad blood. So recently they just had their last game on Sunday where the Browns whooped on their ass. Did uh, the Browns brought it dude it was 35 to 20 was the final oh score. that's a, they were the shiny gold like browns that score. day no shiny gold yeah. they sure you sure painted that that shit gold i'll tell you what <laughs> boy i'll tell you what them browns so taylor uh baker mayfield the uh, you know the quarterback for the quarterback browns for the browns mm-hmm. um after the game you know a lot of the reporters asked him you know how he felt you know about his, you know, coach being on the sideline, his ex coach being on the opposite sideline. Well, actually, no, uh, it was brought up because oh. af- after the game, uh, Hugh Hugh Jackson, I almost said Hugh Jackman. Yeah, there to, you go. <laughs> we, we all almost did. <laughs> Hugh, Hugh Jackson uh, came up to Baker Mayfield and tried to give him a hug, and Baker Mayfield kept him at arm's distance. He, and had, just he shook kept his him like hand. a like a very straight arm oh, handshake really? to keep him away. Like, yeah, like, to keep uh, him away. And then just like, and then the reporters called him out, and they're like, "Why'd you do that?" And he was just like, "So yeah, let me." So this is what he said: Left Cleveland, goes down to Cincinnati. I don't know. It's just somebody that was in our locker room asking for us to play for him, and then goes to a different team. We play twice a year. Everybody can have their spin on it, but that's how I feel. Huh. So pretty much he's kind of saying, like, that don't fly with me. Like, screw that guy. He's on the other team now. And a lot of people are pissed off. Like, Ryan Clark came out recently um, and said, Ryan Clark, former safety in the NFL, said pretty much, like, grow up, man. This isn't, this isn't you know, college. Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is business. You know, you're going to see, you're always going to see another brother on the opposite loser! side. Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling <laughs> sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt! <laughs> oh, damn! Is that what he said? That's exactly what he said. Nice. Damn, you were in the... You were in the Glad line. you get that there. sound bite of him saying yeah. that. <laughs> so, so, Don't worry about so it. So talented. <laughs> so talented. Well, well they then, call and, me fly on the wall. And, and then shoot. Baker Mayfield responded to that, right? No, so as actually Damian Woody's uh, response. So here's actually Damian Woody's response to what happened with Baker Mayfield. Uh, if this one. Was it this? Loser! You're a loser! <laughs> <laughs> close, food, close. Okay. Close. Oh, shit. Technical difficulties, but... Are you feeling sorry for yourself? <laughs> Josh? Basically, yeah. Well, you should be, because you are dirt! <laughs> All right, man, we get it. We you get make it. me sick, you... God big damn. Baby. <laughs> Chill! <laughs> Chill! Hey! Dirt bottle! <laughs> Damn. Oh, that's yeah. when he's yelling at Peggy. Yeah, yeah. damn, dude. That's a great episode too. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Holy hell! God damn. Really, really late Hulu, in. Hulu, fucking. They knew oh, what they were doing. Man. Bringing that Jesus back. They won. they won. the. Did weird. you guys see the Hulu Black Friday? Sorry to. Let's let me let, no no. Let's finish this point oh, first. Oh, I'm point. okay with digression. Dick. Loser, you're a loser. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go, ahead, Josh. <laughs> You guys, seriously. Well, pretty much Damian Woody just said, Baker Mayfield needs to grow up. That's that's pretty much what he said in a longer rant. Um, you guys that's what you it. couldn't find on the article? You guys distracted me. That's what me. took so long <laughs> to pull up on the article? No, I didn't. I was <laughs> done so it. It. <laughs> He was pretty, before I watched it, he was pretty fired up. And he was just like, dude, this isn't, uh, he, he pretty much said like, listen, man. When you need a job and someone offers you a job, you don't fucking 
take the high road and be like, no, I don't want to piss off my old team. Yeah, like, yeah. dude, this dude took two years to win three games, mm-hmm. and he's offered a coaching job. Hell yeah, I'd take it if I yeah, was him. Yeah, I'd take it too. It's like, you know, the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing all over many, many times and expecting a different result. They were not winning games. And if I'm going to get an offer to go somewhere else, I'm going to go for it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Damian Woody also went up to say, grow up, you know, things happen in pro football. He also noted that Mayfield transferred from Texas Tech <laughs> Mm-hmm. to Oklahoma yeah. in college, <laughs> despite both teams being in the Big 12 Conference. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, sh- hypocrite much? Or seriously, dude. <laughs> so, so Baker Mayfield responded on, I believe it was Instagram? Yeah, it was, it was Instagram. like Instagram he responded, I didn't lose 30-plus games to be fake and then do that. He continued to comment, I wasn't going to have a scholarship. Good try, buddy. Pretty much he just called his ex-coach a fake by saying I lost thirty plus games on purpose, and I'm gonna go to this other team now. Yeah, which is like he pretty which much is just not, a loser. <laughs> <laughs> which is not, I'm sure, which is not what happened. It's dude, the guys in that locker room, dude, the NFLs, dude, they got a bunch of prissies in there, dude. That, Nowadays, a lot of the yeah. younger players are very much like they're like, oh, you're gonna try to tell me what to do without respecting me, yeah, like, oh, I'm gonna just do my own thing. Like it's it's so stupid. But from uh, from what, what I also heard too is that it also stemmed from, you know, Jackson kind of revealing that Mayfield wasn't really his guy, um, because they signed Tyra uh, Tyrod Taylor from the Buffalo Bills in the offseason, and, Tyro- and he wanted to ride with him. Yeah, he wanted to have him as a starter. And mm-hmm. dude, he was a decent quarterback in Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, he's a he, proven NFL quarterback. He got what a three year deal. Like a was with it the a, Browns, yeah. What was his deal with the Browns? No, it was just a one year deal. It was a one year, seventeen yeah. million dollar deal, though, right? Yeah, something yeah, like that. Something like that. So he didn't want to go to Bay- Baker Mayfield because, again, he was a rookie and he didn't want to have a problem of losing again with a rookie. But he was yeah. having a problem of losing with a veteran because mm-hmm. he wouldn't ch- shake shit up. So I mean, Baker needs to just chill the fuck out, man. He's a rookie. He'll learn. He'll yeah. learn real soon that because I'm pretty sure. You know, this kind of behavior, it'll bleed out into other shit he does, too, when he gets pissed off. Mm-hmm. He's going to do that to the wrong teammate, and he's going to have the whole fucking team revolt against him. Yeah, exactly. So. Like, that's how you break a locker room. And, I mean, it's like in the real world. I mean, yes, it's football. We can't obviously always, you know, use the real world as an analogy. But if you're going to go from company to company, you're still going to see this person. Exactly. You know, and you're either going to either negotiate or, you know, work with this person in some capacity. You got to keep it civil. You have to have civility. And for you to fucking, I mean, again, I know it's football and I know things get heated. It's a chance for the Browns to really, like, act behind the scenes and be like, dude, you're a guy, but don't do that shit again. Oh, and I'm, I hope, I'm sure they will do that. I'm sure they will kind of grain them in because they don't want to be like, dude, publicity. we we are we're having a tough time winning already. We do not need teams <laughs> making the, making their game against us their Super Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're gonna they're gonna have yeah. a tough go these next few games, especially with teams that have taken exception to what he said. They played the they fucking played the Bengals again week sixteen. You know this team's gonna be pissed. Dude, they're gonna <laughs> play the Texans too, and Texans and thrash them. Oh, I know. And what's funny is, um, Fu in the game, uh, the Browns Demarius Randall got an interception. From uh, Andy Dalton on on the Bengals, and right after getting the interception, he was near the Bengals sideline, uh-huh. and he handed the ball to Hugh Jackson. <laughs> like here you go, <laughs> here you go, coach. Like here's the ball for you. And then he shook his hand, and like the coach shook his hand and just passed the ball off to someone else. He didn't so care. yeah, he didn't give he didn't give a shit, man. And, and so they're kind of making fun of him at the same time. I mean, you got it's all in good fun. Yeah, but I, again, Mayfield's just a little petty. But to continue in foosball, I kind of want to give an update on our pickums from last week. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. How did we do? So let's start from the bottom because I mean it's a little easier that way. Stiff was three and four last week. Oh, yeah, she got she got two. She got two extra mm-hmm. calls. That's nice. She got the Bears win, the Seahawks win, and the Broncos win. Correct. Uh, all the others wrong. Josie, you were th- hey hey. You were four and three. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, two better. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Or one better. And you were you only got the Detroit Lions wrong, the Panthers wrong, the Bengals wrong, and the yeah. Bengals wrong. Yeah. 
But you pretty much got Dallas, New Orleans, Cincinnati, Denver, and Minnesota. Hmm. Foo, well, you got the Lions giddy. wrong and the Bengals wrong. So you were five and two. Oh, five and two. And me, I was five and two as well. I got the Panthers wrong and the Steelers wrong. So as of right now, as the standings are, I am in the lead at thirty six and twenty two. The Foo is coming up the rear at uh, thirty five and twenty three. Shenanigans. Joe C is at thirty three and twenty five. Who you're right there? Still, still two games behind, man, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or three games from me. And then uh, Steph's still at a sub five hundred at twenty eight and thirty. I, <laughs> I understand that doesn't happen. That 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 not bad. really, man. Not that's, too often. That's that yeah. doesn't, it's weird. Oh, Poor Steph. When you have sub five hundred, you should not be making picks. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the the casinos love those people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steph, keep going to the casinos. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, oh, it's the food's money. money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Keep going. Nope. <laughs> so, so what, what we got coming up? This week's games. Uh, first game we got is the Saints versus the Cowboys at Texas Stadium. Uh, the Saints are favored seven and a half. This game's going to be on Thursday at five twenty. Saints Chelsea? just look good too. They, they look good. I, I'm going with the Saints. Saints. It's at Cowboys. At yeah, at Cowboys. It's going to be a close game, but I think the Saints got this. The Cowboys' defense is actually pretty surprisingly good. Uh, I'm, but I'm gonna go with the Saints. The Saints are just on a roll, man. Mm-hmm. They're just they're just too good. Foo. I'm gonna go Cowboy, baby. Oh God damn it! I can smell a beat from a mile away. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and Steph also picked the the Saints. Um, next game is the Ravens at the Falcons. Mm-hmm. The and it's actually even. The odds are even. This is the first game Who's I can at home? say. Who's at home? Uh, Falcons. It's at Mercedes-Benz so, Stadium. I'll take the Ravens. Take the Ravens. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna take the Ravens too. Baltimore. Yeah, that that Ravens defense is just way too good. The Falcons like, didn't um, exactly impress. They ain't impressing me. nobody. No for one. <laughs> I don't know. What, they they mm-hmm. just not even hot like Atlanta. flies. Falling like flies, everyone on that team. I swear, it's like a new injury every game. Yeah. Playoffs. I think the I think the mascot got injured, so they had to bring out a backup. <laughs> they had to bring backup, out a mascot. A backup Towel mascot. boy. They're like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> good luck, buddy. Actually, you know, I heard he's even on IR. Shut so. up. <laughs> <laughs> Next game, uh, and this game may not seem close, but I think it may be. It's the Bills at Miami, and the only reason why I say this, uh, Miami's favored. You know, minus five. Uh, is because for some reason every game the Bills have been in after like their first two games where they got blown out, they've somehow stayed in the game. I think it was after Vontae Davis retired. Remember that player that retired at halftime? At halftime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he retired, the team's like, fuck yeah, fuck let's yeah, galvanize. Like, yeah, dude, and... they galvanize behind that dude's retirement, and all of a sudden they've been decent. They're not great. Right. You know, they still have a losing record, but they... You know what? They had, they had a good week last week, so I'm going to pick Against them. Okay, so you're going to go with Miami? Yeah. Okay. Josie? Hmm. I am not. You're going to go with Buffalo? Yeah. The Bills? Yeah. Steph also went with the Bills. Uh, I am actually going to go with Miami, too. Uh, only because I cannot... You got a chance to pick up on Josh. Yeah. I cannot gain a game. Let the food gain a game. Josie, I don't care. What a he's, bitch, dude. What the three, fuck? He's three games behind. All right, you no pick worries. first now. Damn it. Yeah. Next game. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Damn, Josh game. is like. <laughs> what? That's not part of the rules? <laughs> yeah. Next game is the Broncos at the Bengals. Um, it's in Cincinnati. It's Denver's favorite, uh, minus four and a half. Again, super fucking close game. It could probably go either way. Uh, I'm yeah. actually going to pick the Broncos. The Bengals look like shite. This um, game is either going to be very exciting to watch or very boring to watch. Yes. I don't see it going any other way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, I mean, I I think only because... Is Dalton hurt? Yes. Fuck. Yes. So I'm going Broncos. You're going to go Broncos? Uh, who'd you pick? I picked Broncos as well. <laughs> Steph also picked Broncos. Who the Cincinnati starting right, quarterback is This will be a hurt. wash because I'm going to go with the Broncos too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Cincinnati. Yes, if they had Andy, Andy Dalton and AJ Green, I'd I would say, say they, totally they got a shot. Got a shot, but two, and then not only that, the Broncos actually have a decent offense with that uh, undrafted rookie, Philip Lindsay. Um, yeah, he's badass. Yeah, this guy, Philip Lindsay, he went to the University of Colorado. 
um, in Denver, and he didn't get drafted at all, and he walked on, or pretty much was undrafted by the Denver Broncos, and now he's their fucking starting running back. Damn. And this dude's badass. He's had, Dude, what, he's like five the... or six hundred yard games this yeah. year? Yeah. And it's, we're only in week 12, and he... He was suspended one game for throwing a punch, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he do? He threw a punch, man. Yeah, dude. Like, what happened, though? Like, you know, they're there playing... Was a guy fo- side-eyeing him or something? No, it was actually against a lineman. They were playing it? football, foo, and then he's like, come here, bitch. Boom. <laughs> yeah, he just threw a punch to a lineman, and the guy's just like... I think they just showed him, he just brushed it off, like... Yeah, the guy's like, what the yeah. fuck? And then the ref's like, you, out of here. Out of here, yeah. Immediately pulls it apart. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be an interesting game to see, I think especially because that Broncos defense can either, it's a like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. It could be fucking amazing mm-hmm. or it could be complete shite. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, next game is going to be the Browns at the Texans. It's going to be at Reliant or RNG or NRG stadium, I believe is what it's called in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, I'll start first. I'm going to be going with the Texans only because these guys are on an eight game winning streak after starting the season. Where are they playing? Three. Uh, the Browns. <sighs> Texans. Yeah, yeah, you can't pick the Browns when the... Yeah. You know, I w- I'm really... You know, I was actually really close to picking the Browns only because of their rookies, mm-hmm. um, especially that rookie running back, Nick Chubb. Dude, this dude is insane. Like, he's like another Todd Gurley. Uh, but, and what's funny is, um, he's a ex-Georgia running back. He Georgia? Was on, he was on the same oh. team as Todd Gurley. So, when Todd Gurley was a senior... Mm-hmm. Or Jun- yeah, he was a senior. Um, he was a senior. Sony Michelle, uh, uh, the Patriots running back, f- was a sophomore. Was a sophomore, and then Nick Chubb was a rookie. And so, pr- pretty much all three of them were in the same backfield, and all three of them are fucking studs dude, right now in the badass. NFL. Like they, nice. yeah. So it's like, dude, what the hell did Georgia do to these guys? What did they feed them? Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get them Georgia peaches. Women, right? We're talking about women. I. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Continuing. <laughs> so, Josie, where are you going with Houston? Yeah. 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 Stiff's also going with Houston. So the next game is actually going to be a little bit more of a toss-up. It involves the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego <laughs> 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 at at the Steelers, and the Steelers are favored minus three and a half. Hmm. Chargers. You go Chargers. Yeah, I am too. They've they've been an underdog that's been coming through. Yeah, still. I mean, it's 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 fun talking shit about the Chargers, but and, they've been putting it on. And, and they've ban- they've bandaided their kicker problem because mm-hmm. they still miss kicks, but they're winning games. They're now. They're winning games now. Yeah, they're getting, they're up by enough to where they don't have to worry about missing a few field nice. goals. I remember them having a problem with that last year too. Oh. Yeah, remember uh, kick uh, Mister Koo. Yeah. Coo, yeah. Uh, Kid Koo or whatever the hell's name Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Steph also picked the Chargers. I'm going to go with the Steelers, actually. Whoa. Um, only because there's no Melvin Gordon for the Chargers. And the Steelers just lost a nail-biter to the Broncos last week. And I think they're going to feast on this Chargers defense. Like, this Chargers defense has not lived up to their billing this year, like they they kept saying, the fucking Joey Bosa and a couple other guys were gonna blow up, you know, everyone in the league, and they mm-hmm. haven't done shit. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with the Steelers. I just think that their offensive weapons are just too great, and I think they're gonna feast on these Chargers. But you know, either way, we'll see what happens. We shall see. And then the last game is gonna be on Monday. I'm gonna night football. It's gonna be the Redskins at the Eagles. Hmm. I would love an upset here, but the Eagles got this. I Maybe, I you know what I I'm even skeptical because the, Carson Wentz has not. They don't like look good. Looked, I think he came back too early from his injury. Well, also you got to understand too is that we've lost we lost three of our running backs uh, or two of our running backs. I'm sorry, Jay Ajayi, Darren Sproles. Um, we were without Carson Wentz for like four games, and we had a completely new offensive coordinator. It's been like a ragtag season. Yeah, th- this was a scene, season of a lot of change after just winning a Super Bowl. And most teams go through a Super Bowl hangover, as they say, like the following year. They just yeah. sh- are shite. Like, I think the Falcons were shit last year after just going to the, C- the Super Bowl the year before. Now they're extra shite. Now they're extra <laughs> shite. So, obviously, they didn't fix something Shout out there. to Steph. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm going to be going with my Eagles as well, though. I can't I can't pick against them. How about you, Foo? The, uh, 
the racist skins or the eagles? <laughs> the eagles. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, this one, yeah, you're right. This one is going to be a toss up, and fuck. Every time I've picked the eagles a few times, and they've let me down. You're not the only one, man. <laughs> <laughs> they let me. They let me down more than they're letting you down. Trust me. Foo, it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Redskins. Oh, dang! Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Redskins. Wow. You know, I'm totally cool with this. The Redskins winning as long as Zach Ertz gets the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! Oh man. Yeah, again, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, the Eagles head coach, Doug Peterson, actually recently came out and said that the offensive coordinator, uh, Mike, Gro- Mike Rowe, is pretty much on notice. It's like, fix this shit, let's fix these woes, and let's get going. We're going to fix our fucking coordinator problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that's it for me in sports, guys. If you guys have any any of you listeners out there have come across any interesting stories, feel free to send it to us on foobarshow at gmail.com. Again, you guys can reach us out there for anything. Uh, if you guys want a, a specific topic for us to go, you, you know, talk to tell about, us we suck. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good with Just that. Just acknowledge we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been Fuba Sports. Wow, that was a good first uh, little pilot for Fubar Sports. Hopefully, we can grow this into its own thing. Pilots and maybe, captains. Uh, maybe it'll it'll get some legs, and uh, we'll just go from there. We're the captains. We're screwed. Well, thank you all very much for listening into the Fubar Show. Thank you for downloading the pod on most major podcast apps, subscribing, and telling a friend like a champ. You can always reach us at Fubar Show. That's fwbarshow dot com, and fwbarshow is our handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter. And Instagram. Oops. <laughs> Check us out. Drop us a line. And we'll <laughs> fill it up like a couple of booze. <laughs> I've been Josie. I've been Josh. Foo. <laughs> and you've been the food. <laughs> All here to say and sign off with Don't Be a Dick. <laughs>